Hello guys and welcome to another Minecraft video. Uh, today in this video I will be showcasing um, my Redstone 4-bit computer that I built uh, four months ago. But today I thought it'd be a good idea to showcase this, show you how it works, and um, also run some uh, demo programs. Uh, they're probably not going to be big programs, just small ones as a demonstration. But anyway, without further ado, let's... Um, get right into this video. Alright, so to start off, we're gonna um, be looking at the UI panel, or the user interface panel. This is the area where um, you basically interact with a computer and, um, you know, just uh, do stuff with it. Um, so, this over here, these are the um, flags, the flag indicators. So this uh, computer has two different flags. This is the overflow flag, which shows if like a program is too big or if you're like um, um, if you have like a number that's uh, bigger than four bits, then and it then it will um, indicate that there's an overflow or something. Um, the zero flag. Uh, is just supposed to indicate if the if the computer is displaying zero, and which is which it is uh, displaying zero right now. So yeah, that's the zero flag. Um, let's look over here. These are the clock indicators. These are supposed to indicate basically the state that the uh, computer clock is in. Like if it just uh, pulsed. Um, then there will be a, um, uh, and it will indicate that, that the clock pulsed, and if the, um, program memory, uh, moved to a different line. Uh, so that's the, the clock indicators. Uh, also, oh wait, also this, um, this, uh, indicator is supposed to indicate if the clock is, like, at a halting, halting, ah, halting state. And which it is right now, it's the uh, it's completely off. It's nothing is uh, happening because the computer is turned off at the moment, so the clock is at its uh, halting state. Um, and last but not least, this uh, indicator is just supposed to show you if um, if the uh, program that you're running requires a user input. All right, so next, um, this thing right here is the user input, which is um, not really much. It's just a, um, it's just a way to interact with the computer if you need to, like if you need to input data to the computer to uh, for like uh, calculating or something. Um, yeah, there's like two four-bit inputs on the user input just for two different uh, numbers if you need to. Um, over here is the power controls. This is just to uh, toggle the clock to either turn it on or off. Um, that's And uh, to turn off and on the clock is all we really need because um, the clock just um, controls the entire computer. And um, over here is just the uh, output display, just a raw binary display that represents the output of a program. And over here is just a reset button that will reset all of the memory. Alright, so this is the computer's ALU. Now this is actually extremely small. This is the smallest ALU I've ever put into one of my Redstone computers. but. Um, yeah, it's so it's very compact and very small, and it's also very simple, just like the architecture of this computer. Um, but this is not actually my design. Um, if you want to see the uh, the actual creator of this ALU, then there will be a link in the description. But um, anyway, I'll be moving on now. All right, so um, coming from the uh, user input is this um, giant uh, data input bus. And this bus is um, sup is supposed to uh, go directly to the computer's uh, memory array, the short-term memory array, which is um, right here. 
I, I don't know if I really should call this um, RAM or not, but if, if you want to, then that's okay. Um, but basically, um, yeah, the, the whole point of the data bus is just to send data to the computer. You can send it to the memory first, just so it can get saved in there uh, temporarily, and then um, afterwards it will go to the ALU to get processed. And it will get it will the final result will be outputted through this um, output bus, and that uh, will go to the output, which is um, well the main data output, which is uh, right here. If you can see, it's um, four bits, just because this is a four-bit computer. But anyway, um, yeah. So over here um, also is the is the computer's uh, program memory. Now I, don't, I forgot how many uh, bytes this is, but it, I think it's fairly uh, big for what I was going for because I want to eventually uh, try and test this computer's capabilities with as much memory, as much program memory as possible. Uh, but right, if you see right here, I have a simple program right here. This uh, program is actually an addition program and that is going to be the first program that I will be demonstrating after I've shown you the entire computer. Now it is a very simple computer, it only takes up like uh, four lines of uh, program memory. So it will be uh, very quick to run through, um, very uh, quick to process and yeah. Alright so the last thing I want to show you before I um, start um, uh, running this computer and showing you the programs that I've came up with. Um, this over here is the um, computer clock. This is the basically the device that um, runs the entire computer and keeps all of its um, components in sync. Um, it's actually a very um, interesting design, I have to say, because it, it's actually probably not the most efficient design I've um, ever seen. It's more like a design that I would come up with. Um, I'm not really, I don't really know how to explain this honestly, so I'm just gonna go on with showing you the programs. Alright, so now that I've shown you um, basically the main components of this computer, um, now I would like to show you uh, how this computer runs. I will be running two different programs um, as I probably said, I don't know honestly, but I w the first program I want to show you is a basic addition program, which you see is already on there. I've shown you that before. But anyway, let's um, now turn on the computer and we will let the program run. Uh, basically, this program is supposed to take two numbers from the user input and add them together to get a result on this uh, main output right here. So we're just going to uh, press the clock on just to turn the computer on and you'll see that the halt indicator will turn off and um, yeah now this indicator says waiting for user input so therefore we have to um, input two numbers um, so we'll just do um, in binary we will do we'll do six plus two and 6 plus 2 should equal 8. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna save that data to the um, to the data registers and then we will um, send that data to the computer basically confirming that we have um, inputted data and then that indicator should turn off and the clock should pulse. It should pulse a couple times until we get a result on this output and the output result should be an 8. So we're just going to wait, and there we go. Um, so, um, yeah, this uh, the output is 1, 0, 0, 0, and in binary that means 8. So, uh, therefore, um, yeah, 6 plus 2 equals 8. Okay, so the last uh, program that I want to show you on this computer is the Fibonacci sequence. Um, now, if you don't know what the Fibonacci sequence is, 
then this is not going to be the video to uh, um, tell you what the Fibonacci sequence is. Um, there are probably other videos that will tell you that, so um, make sure to do your research. But anyway, I will be, um, again, rebooting the computer, and I will be showing you the Fibonacci sequence. Now we're just going to turn, turn the computer on, and you'll see the clock uh, indicators will reset, and the clock is going to pulse. We're just going to wait here until the sequence starts. So right now we're at 0, now we're at 1, and we're going to add 1, and that's 2. So 2 and the previous numbers from the sequence should add together to get 3, so we're just going to wait for 3. And there we go, 3. Um, now we're going to wait for the next number of the sequence, which is 5. Um, we're just going to wait, and there we go. Um, 5 just got displayed on the screen. And now the next number in the sequence is going to be 8. So we're just going to wait for the computer to process. And there we go. 8 is again displayed. And then the next number is 13. And uh, after 13, um, the computer will stop um, running. And there's 13. Um, so after 13, um, there will be the, an overflow in the system because that this is a 4-bit computer, and you just see that the overflow flag just uh, turned on. Um, because that this is a 4-bit computer, the 4-bit um, system can only store um, 16 different states, so there can't be 21 um, or other numbers after 21 because um, of the limited uh, system of only four bits. Um, but yeah, that's the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, um, please like, comment, subscribe to see more videos like this one. And I'm sorry if I if you didn't really understand what exactly what was going on in this video because I'm I'm really bad at uh, making videos, especially videos that. Um, that involved me talking like the entire video so um, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I will see you guys all later in the next video